You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. <laughs> so I was uh, sc- I was scrolling. I promise I was not stalking. I was scrolling through Instagram, mm-hmm. and I saw uh, I saw on Shelly's page yeah. that she was doing something that I had never seen before. Uh, she was singing to somebody in a medical bed. Mm-hmm. And so I did a little bit more research mm-hmm. and I came across Harmony Hospice. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, you know, hospice care is something that I'm not terribly familiar with. Uh, my mother in law passed in hospice care. She was there a couple of days. And I just remember uh, that experience was just very. It was, for one, it's difficult because somebody's you're, you're yeah. using someone, of right? Of course, yeah. yes, uh huh. But it was very, I don't even know what the word stale, but it just felt very. Uh, I remember there was times when we would go sit with her and visit with her, and it's so quiet and dark there. Yeah. And it was, it, you know, she was, I don't even want to say she was in a coma, but she was not awake, you know. But for the family, it was just very uh, solemn, you mm-hmm. know, and it, yeah. was, it was, it just felt heavy. Mm-hmm. No and doubt. What I saw what you guys were doing was something. Mm-hmm. Very, very different. Yeah. yeah. The so, setting is everything. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And it helps the family too. I so, mean, believe it or not. Tell everybody who's not familiar with Harmony Hospice exactly what you guys do that's a little bit different than most hospice care. And explain to them what hospice care is because mm-hmm. I grew up in a town of 2,000 people and so does she. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I had no clue what hospice care was until we needed it. People right. are afraid of the word too. Yes. They're but really afraid of it's the in word. It's life, right? Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. what they're, that's mm-hmm. they're I mean, associated yeah. with. Mm-hmm. So. Well, first off, I want to say that, you know, a lot of people, is like what Shelly was saying, is that they're afraid of the word. Right. And so what I'm tr- what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring uh, awareness to hospice. And hospice is not about dying. It's about living because just like you were talking about the time and you were spending, your loved one was still breathing your right. loved one was still hearing right. your loved one was still present yes even though they were unresponsive they were still present and so to us that's the part that we want to get to that's where we want to be in that in that time because there's a lot of things that could could need to happen you may need closure on uh, some things, there could be, you know, mommy, mama, I'm sorry for this, and you know, honey, I'm sorry for doing this. Or there could be those times that you need to have during those moments. But that's where we want to hit on, and I'll let Shelly talk about it and the music part of it. But for us, basically, hospice is a holistic approach to healthcare, and so. It's no longer going to your PCP, your provider. It's no longer going to, uh, if, if they have cancer, um, they're not doing going to their oncologists anymore. Um, if they're on for heart, they're not going to their cardiologists anymore. It's comfort care. And so when comfort care comes in, we talk about a whole lot of measures because it requires a team. And so we are just two people in this team. There is a team of people that do this. And so... Um, and so Shelly, yeah, I know we brought half of them because they're related to us. Yeah, I know yeah, they come along with us. <laughs> yes, they come along with us. Yes. We're all like this yeah. hand in hand, arm in arm. But, um, <clears throat> Shelly's got the music aspect of it. And, um, I run Harmony Hospice. I'm the administrator and the director of nursing of Harmony Hospice Care. And so, um, basically what, what Harmony Hospice does is when we are uh, receive a referral, it's somebody that is obviously uh, uh, facing some type of a terminal illness. Um, And so what we do is we have our uh, business growth development uh, director, who is Liris Lares. She goes, and uh, another family member. (laughs) And and so she'll go and do what we call a hospice consult. And so she's going to ask all the questions, and she's going to gather all the information, so since, and, so since I'm slow, yes, and I'm going to talk like a three-year-old sometimes. Go ahead. So I, said, let's say I've got oh, yeah. a family member. Yes. They're no longer uh, receiving medical care. No, there's right. nothing to do so right. anymore. They're yeah. at my uh-huh. house. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. So, so Lyris is going to come to my house yes. and yeah. evaluate. Exactly. Well, okay. everybody's going to go to your house yeah. because wherever the patient is is where we're going to go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, everybody's going to go. So like your loved one, I guess, was in a nursing home? Um, um, uh, and, what? You know, she was at home. And then I think, I think before she went into uh, hospice care, she ended up going to... Uh, 
it was Bamsi or Samsi at the time. Oh, yes, okay. Uh-huh. And it got to the point where they were no longer going to uh, administer any help, and it was mm-hmm. time Treat to her. Yeah. take her somewhere. Right. Bamsi has a palliative care physician over there, and she's awesome. I forgot her name, but she's really awesome. But, um, yes, so Lyris is going to go to the house. Um, and so um, at that point, she's going to collect all the information and everything, and then we're going to start wanting to talk to their PCP, their provider. Um, and so this is where we need to get an order to admit whoever the referral is and then to eva- to to treat them. And so when, when we come in, this is where everybody's like, oh, my God, there's so many people. There's so many people. Yeah. It's scary, yeah. It is scary. But it, like I said, it's a team approach. This is, we're dealing with the holistic part of you because in, ho- in hospice, the holistic approach does not only um, – we don't believe that there's only one side of you. There's, there's not only one side of Gabe. You're not only the medical side. Mm-hmm. You're – you're, um, you've got a spiritual side, you've got a psychosocial side where you've got your, your support system. You've your got, there's a lot of different side, sides to yeah. you. And so this is what our team does. And so, um, it's a social worker, it's a chaplain, it's a CNA, which, oh, wow. uh, the CNA will come and help bathe. Uh, it's the nurses, um, it's, uh, did I forget anybody? Uh, the Shelly, the music, um, so we also have this. a physician. So mm-hmm. is all this an in-house treatment or is this, is this in-house at your facility or is this, Hey, you're coming daily to my house. No, we go to the mm-hmm. house where the, pa- oh. or wherever the patient is. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So yeah. they can still be at home. They don't necessarily have to go right. to mm-hmm. y'all's facility. Right. 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 Gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. let me just put it this way. We have an office, but we do not have a facility. We okay. do, we do contract with facilities if they need to go to a facility, but, um, but in most, most often everything happens in the home. Got you. Okay. Yes. That, that makes, and you know, so something we, like that's so much nicer because, I think most people would want to be home. They want to be home. Uh The majority of them want to be home. We get a lot of uh, older women, uh, you know, like your little abuelitas and everything. It's like, you know, I built this house. I made this house. You know, I'm going to, I don't want to leave this house. (laughs) You know, and it's like, they do. you know, why would you want to do that? That would be her last wish. You know, it's like, you know, so, yeah. So we understand that. We know that. And so when we come in. We're not looking to change up your life and flip your life upside down or anything because your life is probably already like that. Mm-hmm. When you're having to come onto hospice, and we've we've seen so many different experiences yeah. where uh, people are, um, they're probably not even eating right because they can't even get up to the stove anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they can't wash their clothes anymore. Their house is a mess because they can't even get up and do the things that they used to do. Um, and your Eating, life, I mean, they can't get up and make themselves something to eat or yeah, whatever. So yeah. your life has changed already. And so when we come in, we, we come in and it's a team effort of things and you start to, they start to feel all that support and, um, and often and this is a funny thing because we offer so much support that if, um, if a patient's what we call graduate from hospice where they have to come off a of hospice because they're no longer, uh, passing or they're no longer ill anymore because it's happens. not only yes, for end it of does. life yeah. it's not yeah. a, uh-huh. it's not only end of life in every earlier, situation yeah it's like no 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 <laughs> but i was gonna let sylvia explain You're that to you know. yeah because yeah you know it's not <laughs> only that i mean you get mm-hmm. on this services for a certain amount of time too mm-hmm. and then you know i like she said they graduate from that and they go you know mm-hmm. go back to and, yeah and so if they're okay. no longer terminally ill then we cannot keep them on services and so i mean the hospice and palliative care organization has done a lot of studies and so i'm a nerd i'm a nerd yes so uh <laughs> but she's so, a smart nerd <laughs> with, with, great, with great hair by the way yeah she's oh, a smart nerd. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you but um no so they've done it they've done a study that when hospice comes into the home you will probably will probably get a, a, a patient and um that has you know pain is unmanaged, shortness of breath, and, um, you know, they haven't been able to do all these things. Hospice comes in, we help with all the medications and the management and uh, the support system and everything gets in there. And then all of a sudden they're like doing so good, but, and then we have to graduate them. It's like we have right. to get them off services. And the moment that we come off, it breaks my heart. I can't yeah. stand it. Because they don't want they don't want the team to leave. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But, but they're doing yeah. better at this point. They're right? doing better. So right. I, yeah. They may need some other kind of care, but it's not yeah. 
what you guys like they may need a nurse to still come in and right and do some yeah but not on the level like yeah on that level. not at that level yes exactly yeah and so so back to what hospice is so uh basically so it does take a holistic approach and so it's no longer receiving treatment for whatever it is that we bring uh, them on services for and so it is comfort care and so when 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 uh when you think of hospice the main thing is is what Medicare and uh, the state of Texas, uh, Health and Human Services, what they want us to focus on are um, pain management, uh, management from shortness of breath. Uh, it's all of these uh, symptoms that you normally get at end of life. It's when, say, for instance, you're taking um, hydrocodone or morphine mm -hmm. or something like that for your pain um, is because cancer can be painful. If you're taking something like that, they want you to, be ma to manage their bowels. And so that's something that hospice takes very seriously. We're going to ask, did you have a bowel movement? Right. Yeah. And so because it's going to bring discomfort to you, anything mm -hmm. that could possibly make you uncomfortable. And so if you're getting closer to the end of life, then we're going to have our chaplain come in. If you're having some kind of spiritual distress where you kind of need to get, to, mm -hmm. you know, kind of closer. This is where Shelly comes in because a lot of these symptoms, um, they can be alleviated and um, kind of, for a moment, they can kind of all go away when you are listening to music right. that mm -hmm. you used to listen to when you were younger or, um, you know, we have dementia patients. I posted something on, fa on our Facebook page not too long ago where the lady was just, she's dementia and you can't even, she doesn't even talk anymore. And, but she's, she's just moving yeah, her hands. Yeah, she's moving yeah. and it's oh, just really? amazing. It. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. You know, you know it's funny because I'm at this weird age where... Uh, um, my old folks are getting a lot older, mm -hmm. you know, and they're very yeah. sickly. Right. You know, I've got a grandmother that just recently mm -hmm. got diagnosed with dementia. You know, I told you earlier, dad yeah. passed last year and mm -hmm. mother-in-law was yes, cancer sorry a few about years that. ago. Yes. Uh, my fa my father-in-law is 91, you know, he's still healthy, but he's starting to have that's some. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a long, that's a long yes. life. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. great. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it gets to the point where when I check on people that are sick or in the hospital, like family members, I try and make sure and ask uh, whoever's there with them or whoever I'm talking to, how's their attitude? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because... You're so awesome. That's wonderful. Say, say yeah. that again so my wife can <laughs> say, You heard her, right? Well, just for yeah. asking that question. <laughs> yeah, no, but, you know, the attitude's huge. Uh -huh. yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, like, when I saw that video of you singing, yeah. uh, you know, I thought about my mother-in-law because my mother-in-law had this massive personality right i mean huge mm -hmm. she was very religious she loved to sing in the choir oh uh, wow. she loved music mm -hmm. yes you know and it was one of those and i think about her last days and you know not to put too much of her out there but her you know her last days were not uh symbolic to the way she lived life right you know it was, mm -hmm. it was yeah that's what you, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you want to do yeah. exactly you know? i mean it's it's music is a very powerful gift it's a it's an amazing it gift is. to have um, and you know, I'm just super honored to be part of Harmony because not only because they're my family, but we are very, we love people and we love helping people. It's just something that, that is a very strong, that's a strong dynamic in our family. It's in, it's in our DNA. It's how, how we operate. Um, and it was funny because, you know, my cousin Sylvia here, she's, you know, been a nurse for a very long time. She's been one of my heroes, you know, you know, doing this for very Aww. long and that was that was really the the path that i wanted to take after i retired after 40 years that's what i wanted to do was yeah. be a hospice nurse because oh, wow. and and prior to that i had tr gone into become a caregiver because i wanted to make sure that that was something i was going to want to do my mom and i were my dad my dad's caregivers so i mean but for your family it's different right. but i was like i in my mind i knew i was still gonna you know want to do it even though if it wasn't my relative so i i went and i became a caregiver while I was on the road still for tw twice a week for really? this company and um, mm -hmm. and I got immediately paired with hospice patients so that's really what made me want to do hospice because you know it was just a different thing and I would do music I would sing for them I would you know play my guitar for them and just it was and then the one woman that I got hooked um, paired up with for like three years that's all she loved right. was music you know and and she had parkinson's and um you know and she was getting dementia and but like the music just really she felt it so when i decided i was going to go into nursing school after my 40th year you know that's when sylvia um offered me no okay. I, I i got off the road and beginning of the year she 
calls me and asks me if I want to join the team at, uh, with Harmony and come and, you know, do music ministry, music therapy for the patients. And I was like, well, I guess, you know, I'm going to stay in music, but I'm getting hospice like I wanted, you know? So it's, it's been, it's, it's so different. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it is. When our first visit um, that we went to, we didn't know to, if it was going to work. We didn't yeah. know if it was going to so be. Well, I had seen this? it. I had seen yeah. it. Mm -hmm. They had not seen yeah, it. Yeah, I hadn't seen but it. But mm -hmm. I had seen how it affects people mm -hmm. in a positive way. You know, like I said, because I was doing that for the patients as a, as a caregiver. Right. Right. So um, the first visit that we went to, the woman liked to sing also. She loved mariachi music. Oh, really? And um, so her daughter, um, you know, was familiar with my career. And um, she was in the other room and she told my, she told Sylvia that she didn't think that her mom was up for it today. And Sylvia's like, well, just let Shelly go in and try. Let's see what happens. And so we walk into the other room. She's a tiny, beautiful, tiny little lady. And I lean over and I introduce myself. And um, I just said, so I hear you love to sing mariachi music. And her eyes were closed when I introduced myself. When I said mariachi music, her eyes opened. Really? And uh, she says, I love boleros she tells me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I do too. Can I sing my favorite one for you? So I started singing Mil Besos and as I started singing, Encontrado en tu amor. She just started singing with me and grab, we grabbed hands and she was like, La fe perdida. We just started singing the song together. And the daughter was crying and like couldn't believe that her mom had just completely shifted in attitude. Yeah. And, um, you know, she, she did pass like two weeks after mm -hmm. that. But in that moment, she was like, she was having a moment with me, you know, she was happy. She was, she was, it was, singing. It was, she was singing. She was singing. Yeah. She was singing and, and holding my hands and like, it just, you know, it's, and I see it and, you know, with dementia too, um, you know, they'll ask me my name 50 times, but I'll do their favorite song and they know every single word yeah. to every single song. And then we finish the song and they ask me my name again. And then we do their favorites <laughs> and it's just a routine. We just, and I just keep reintroducing myself. I, you know, you have to be very patient also. I mean, I, I mean, that is obviously in the, in nursing, you have to be very patient yeah. and compassionate yes. and understand what they are feeling. You know, it's easy for us to want quick, re quick reactions sometimes, but you have to be very patient and very empathetic, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it does help with the anxiety. It does help with the depression that they feel. Mm -hmm. And it does help with the pain management. Mm -hmm. Cause like she mentioned earlier, you know, they, for a moment, you know, your, their brain for, for gets distracted. They forget they're hurting, mm -hmm. you know, and they just, you know, love the music and everyone. And I, what I post on my social media mostly has been, and, um, in the group homes when we do our presentations because uh, Lyris and I and, and the team we will go uh, do presentations at, gr at group homes or nursing homes sometimes and people think that that's the most the setting that I do mostly and it's not that's what I thought it was uh, yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I do mostly one on one with mm -hmm. patients you know in their home so, and it just depends, you know, and, and this is where lyrics, they ask about the patient. They ask, you know, do they want music? Did they like music? Mm -hmm. And if they say yes, then, you we know. We kind of get a feel for yeah. what they like already. Well, I saw yeah. the website. Mm -hmm. It's not just a matter of, of you showing up to sing. Uh, if, if somebody likes a certain instrument. Yeah, it's, likes it's, tailor, a it's, ta yeah. it's a tailor visit, tailor-made awesome. visit That's what hospice is. We're tailored yes, specifically exactly. to whatever the needs of the patient are. So do y'all have a group of people that y'all can pull from to... to participate or or do they work for y'all let's say somebody loves the accordion or something yeah right? mm -hmm. is, is there a um well we have friends and mm -hmm. if we right. needed to but mostly mo anthony you know was in my band for mm -hmm. my whole career okay. so he toured with me everywhere so and he plays everything. he plays he plays a guitar <laughs> so basically yes he plays keyboard bass guitar the spoon, he, the spoon. yeah he can okay. play it and sometimes he will go with me to the visit depends because he's the chaplain also yeah. okay so if he's there as a chaplain um like recently um, my best, uh, my best friend in high school, you know, um, reached out and was needing some, some, had a lot of questions. So I'm like, all you got to do is call. And, you know, we wound up going for the patient and mm -hmm. doing that. But, you know, again, it just totally depends. Mm -hmm. Totally depends. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let me ask you this. You guys have a heavy job. What That's do what you, they say. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, is it, is it, are you guys very spiritual or, or how do you prepare? Cause I would imagine uh, it, it's not like you're, you're in the, 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 what is it? The Nick you or whatever. It's mm -hmm, not like you're mm -hmm. delivering yeah. babies and you're sending them on. Yeah. It is this very is different life. being in a home setting and, um, and especially for a nurse. Uh, I mean, I'm going to speak from my 
point of view. Um, because I'll see the patient coming in, it coming in and admitting them, and I might be the one pronouncing them. Right. And being with the families there, and I'm going to tell you, I'll cry. I'll cry with the families if I if it really you know gets me. Like um, like if it's a mother and daughter, like the mother's passing, you know, because I'm really we're close to our moms. Yeah. You know, you know, you know Shell's mom and everything, and I'm close like that with my mom. And so if it's like a a a, a mother and daughter kind of thing, oh no, I'm gonna lose it. You yeah. know, and yeah. so um, our um, you know the husband and wife have been married for like 50 years or something like that, and they're losing every and you know that oh the gosh. So there's things that get me, you know, but uh, for the most part, um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Well, do you get, <laughs> is it hard for you? Is oh, is it hard, hard for me? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. I'm very spiritual. Yeah. I am very, yeah, very she is. spiritual. Yeah, she is. And um, this is the only way that I have been able to get grounded uh, because in the, in the beginning, um, when I was learning hospice, I said all the wrong things, mm. all the wrong things. And it's just like, it's just like anything that you do new in life. It could be anything. If you are got a new job um, and you're just learning it, you're going to do things wrong or you're going to say things wrong because you're learning things. And that's the way yeah. that I would be in hospice. And so one of the things that I had to learn was not taking these things home because it can be very, <laughs> it is, it, yeah, is it is very difficult. And so I've been doing this a long time. So not to say that it, it I'm still not doing it because I've, um, my husband and I just were recently kind of involved in something for one of our hospice patients. And this has literally kind of consumed our lives for the last two weeks. And um, just give you a little snippet of it. But um, we had a hospice patient and he was estranged from his family. And um, and so when he the patient was declining and getting worse there was nobody there to make any decisions for him and i needed some i needed somebody so we started getting on the computer googling anything that we could find and calling and calling and calling we found a sister and then we found his son and his son was in new orleans and he hadn't talked to his dad since he was 9 years old and um and so Fast forward, he comes to town and um, his dad's in the hospital. He's staying with his dad the whole time. He's been able to have so much closure and reunite and everything. And it's kind of consumed our lives because we've um, we kind of been taking him here and there and um, just kind of making sure that he's safe because he doesn't know the town and everything. And so um, and so, it's just been, um, it's easy to, to get wrapped up with these things, but at the same time, I think, like going back to my spiritual, I think that this is what God would want me to do. Mm -hmm. This is what I think that if I needed this and I needed you, would you do this for me? You know what I mean? Are you, mm -hmm. and I didn't know you. I mean, that's what I would think that that a human, you know, to be nice and help me, you know, kind of thing. And so that's basically, um, but for, for the most part, I've had to kind of like compartmentalize a death and what it means to me. I, I, I think mm -hmm. we have to all kind of do that in hospice and how we understand death. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and that, I think, is what a lot of people fear is that it's the end. It's yeah. it's the final. And when she said, you know, it's not the end, it's the beginning, right? right. It, and I know for me, you know, I in entertaining so many people all over the world for 40 years. I've made a lot of really amazing connections with people through my music, mm -hmm. but nothing like this level from one human being to another that's about to transition, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, I feel just like that. It's the beginning of life for them. Mm -hmm. So if I have any kind of sadness, it's for the family, obviously, yeah. because you know, not everybody feels that way. I felt like that about my father. Even now, you know, I don't, I feel my dad's presence with me right now, everywhere I go. So I, I, it doesn't make me sad. I mean, I miss like us joking around and stuff, but it doesn't make me sad because I know my father is 
in a in you know in a good place and mm -hmm. and and still his his spirit is still alive is mm -hmm. how i feel like a thousand mm -hmm. percent mm -hmm. so that's why for me you know um i did get a little emotional because i did um you know the one of the last couple of visits i did i i knew the person so you yeah. know for the family mm -hmm. obviously it it made me sad but um but other than that like and that for instance like she wanted a party like she wanted to have a celebration you know and uh, cruz de madera you know that mm -hmm. song is exactly that was the song she wanted True. and um you know if you really listen to the lyrics of that song it's like that's what it's talking about you know i don't want you to cry too. for me i want to mm -hmm. celebrate my life you know and um so to it, hear it, that song it's so but she heavy. was not talking to anyone she was not even opening her eyes really so when i got there and i i, you know, I talk very loud so we that's the one thing we have in common as <laughs> as cousins um so you know I, i'm talking to her and i start to sing um, she starts turning her head with her eyes closed to my direction. And, um, I was holding her hand and she like, she squeezed my hand like this and her family was like, Oh my gosh, she's reacting to it. She's reacting to it, but that's what she wanted. Right. And, and that's one of the things that I love, you know, about the team is that they definitely try to do the best to make sure that it's what the patient wants, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they want. You know what it sounds like? And, and not to be, and <laughs> It's, I don't know when it happens, but it seems like at some point you've, my, I told you earlier, I had dad, dad passed away mm -hmm, several yes. years ago, him and mom had done this thing where with the funeral home where they paid for everything and they told him what they wanted and, mm -hmm. and like everything was already set up. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so interesting because it's almost like, I, I don't know, I don't know if you do it in a will, I don't know how you do that, but it seems like there's going to be a time in your life where you're, you're own almost transitioned mm -hmm. and it's like the things that you're doing you're doing them because you know the person and it's like so important to have that done from let's say let's say it's me right mm -hmm. there's so many things that I, I think I would want something done for me in a certain way and it's like how do I convey that to people you know you don't want to wait till you're no longer right. immobile and you can't talk you're not I mean we always out. recommend putting it in a will somewhere yes. because <laughs> because not in not every family member because it's I, we, I've seen it a lot where family and I saw it you know on a personal level not very long ago where it was what the family wanted mm -hmm. and yeah. and that's mm -hmm. not what what <laughs> that mm -hmm. person sure. wanted anything like it at and all and it's like you're like mm -hmm. way on left field you're thinking of you this is not mm -hmm. about you right this is about the person mm -hmm. that you know you're celebrating their life and how they wish to be remembered or how they want to go out if you mm -hmm. will of this life mm -hmm. you know that should be up to them yeah. yes so and that's why i always say it's it, it's important if you see your mom and dad declining or getting older before they start losing their memory mm -hmm. and everything it's it's important to have these conversations so that you know exactly what it is that they want because you want to do what they want not yeah. what you want i mean you I, 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 and we hear that a lot i don't know I don't know. I don't, uh -huh. I don't know what to do. I don't know what. Yeah. And so. And the cultures are different. Yes. Sure. I mean, cultures different. are different. Yes. Yes. There's different cultures you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So everyone has different yes. ways of, you know, doing things. Yeah. But, exactly. But it's very true. It's like my mom, she's so adamant. She does not want plastic flowers anywhere where she's going to be. <laughs> uh -huh. Do not bring your plastic flowers. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like that, yeah. you know. But yeah. my mother-in-law doesn't want any music. She wants it completely quiet. Oh, really? And I was well, like, not go. me, man. I, I want yeah. music. I mean, that would be me. I've already got a mixtape. I told my wife, I said, I got a mixtape. Yes, 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 you know. <laughs> I know, that's my husband's Yeah, <laughs> it's true. You, you know, it's uh -huh. funny because dad's last year, uh, I guess earlier, I guess maybe in January, February, mm -hmm. uh, he had a major heart attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was in the hospital for a while. I think it was, yeah, it was January, February. So I remember going over there and I'd gotten to this kind of thing, you know, already. So I was at the point where I was just recording everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would go and I would sit with him in the hospital and I would just hit record and I'd leave it on the table and we'd talk. Yeah. And I'd ask him questions and we'd just, you know, what did you like? And, you know, what was your best, favorite thing about being a dad? And mm -hmm. just asking him questions, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had no clue. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but it was nice to, to have recorded that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember going back and playing it. And I, I think even when we ha mom was finding scriptures for us to read at the church, uh, I think I'd even asked him, what are your favorite scriptures, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it was, it was, it was just something that, not that, not that I had put a lot of thought in it, but just something compelled me to say, hey, 
your dad's mm-hmm. okay he's talking he's mm-hmm. he's mentally there mm-hmm. all his faculties mm-hmm. are there mm-hmm. let's just record him while we can yeah right yeah. yeah and there's a lot of things that you can do and that's a wonderful thing that you're that you did but um you're really playing me up I am, aren't I? I am, aren't I? I'm just kidding. No, thanks for bringing me on the show. I'm just kidding. You're coming back tomorrow. Right? I'm going to be the new co-host. Every day you come into the house. Sorry, he's great. The house. He's right? awesome. He's. I'm just I love it. No, but there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, there's this new thing that I see um, on the reels and all that kind of stuff where um, they're putting paint. Oh yeah, the the, the oh, arm yeah. hand. They're doing hugs. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're doing hugs. Uh, there's pictures that you can take. I've seen a lot of pictures with the hands and everything, and to me that has so much significance because um, I remember my mother when she would play with my hair when I was younger and all that kind of stuff. It's like your mother's hands are so mm-hmm. significant. Sure. Yeah, you know what I for mean? Sure. And having like that final touch and uh, yeah. that to me, that's very significant. And there's just so many different things that you can do to kind of get, um, to kind of, you know, remember the last moments. Mm-hmm. And that's what we try to do because we come in as a team and we're going to dig out all that what you just finished saying and find out what you did for a living and find out what your hobbies were yeah. find out what kind of books what kind of music what kind of I mean we're going to start digging out all that because that's what we're going to kind of make it about for your end of life that's very specialized yeah yes. that's pretty cool and yes. that's I mean again I this is why I know that Harmony is very special it's a very special company because it, uh, to me, it's just on a different level of compassion, mm-hmm. in my opinion, besides the expertise of, you know, knowing hospice and knowing how to care for patients. I just feel like it's, we just do things to me. That's what sets us apart, in in my opinion, from other companies mm-hmm. is that, you know, you're getting a lot of things. It's like another, it's almost like a, like another family member or adoptive family member for the moment, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, I'll, I'll share this one story too. Um, there was this, um, musician, he was a musician also had dementia and, uh, used to play the saxophone back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so he was one of the ones that, you know, I would get there and he would have his eyes closed and I'm like, you know, aren't you tired of looking at your eyelids? Don't you want to look at me for a little bit? And, you know, he'd start laughing and beautiful eyes, I would, oh, thank way. you. I would, <laughs> I would make it, know. I would make him laugh and it's beautiful. And, he, and then finally You're he would hired. open his eyes and um, one day again he would ask me my name all the time and he he kept trying to remember me like he would he would look at me and try to remember me and one day I I know I noticed uh, and his instrument the, the sax was underneath the table and I was like hey um, what is that right there and he was like I don't know and I said can I open it he was like so I opened it and I knew it was a saxophone and he's like, oh, it's my saxophone. And I'm like, so how about you play something for me? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I don't think I know how to play. I think. So I put the sax together and he started started playing really? and um he surprised himself that he could play <laughs> it his daughter ran out from the other room and mm-hmm. she could not believe that he was playing the sax and mm-hmm. um you know, just us by the by the end of the visit like he's directing the music like he's director whereas when you get there it's just like so different Mm -hmm. but you know we get used to seeing these patients like Mm -hmm. she said and then when we don't have to see them anymore or whether we don't see them anymore or whether they pass on Mm -hmm. it's like oh i think i mean both of them are hard Mm -hmm. but when you know they're still around and you can't go you don't go visit them that's like it's kind of hard Mm -hmm. because you get used to them you get used to having this little relationship with them too Mm -hmm. when you walk in you know well i mean even like talking a minute ago about you know maybe a living will or you know asking questions or even recording dad yeah Mm -hmm. it's like that that doesn't replace family members spending time with your loved ones. Right. Oh, absolutely, absolutely not. not. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where I think, you know, a lot of times as we get older, life gets busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have children, they have yeah. careers. And yeah. then all of a mm-hmm. sudden you see your parents maybe once a month or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. once every six months. And it's like, it's, yes, you don't want to have that. Regret yeah. I saw, I, I yes. saw one patient and he mm-hmm. had all his grandchildren there really? and the, the room was packed. I, like, I got, I had a married couple. Full. They awesome. had, uh, I mean, I'm yeah. great, great grandchildren there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there are some families that are very close knit yeah. together, but yeah. to what you're saying, um, you know, that was me. I was always about, um, career, right. college, uh, school, all that kind of stuff. And um, I had a friend that we went to school with, um, and her name is Melissa. 
and she died of breast cancer way too young. She died too yeah. young. And, um, and so I, when she passed, you know, you, you mourn, you mourn. She was always in my life. I mean, so we mm-hmm. were friends since little, she was always in my life. We're, and then I didn't have her there high. anymore. Yeah. And then I didn't have her anymore. And I'm, and you start kind of like thinking like, really, what are, what are the important things in your life? Sure. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, that's when I really started putting things in, in priority into my life. And ultimately, no matter what, it is always family. Family mm-hmm. is always first. And um, I know my husband gets upset about it, but I'll put family first all the time, even before um, work. I'll fit it in somehow, some way. It's really important. And yeah, yeah it's to. super important to me and to be present all the time. And I will kill myself for it, but, uh, but you can't replace the time. You can't take back the time. And if you're not being present and I, and I really want to encourage your listeners because I see so many older people, they're alone and their yeah, children, they're alone. it's their heartbreaking. Children, yes. It's very heartbreaking and they need people. They need you there. They really need you. And I just really want to encourage your listeners that if they still have, and they, if they have a good relationship with their, their, uh, parents, be present, be a part of them. Even if they're not saying much, being quiet in, in, in the room, does it mean that it's that they don't want you there? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's even just sometimes it just can't. Yes, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Cause we yes. have seen them where nobody's there, you know, and it's, it is heartbreaking to see that, yes. to know that they're, they don't have anyone. They, so they look forward to when their nurse comes or yeah. when I come mm-hmm. or when Lyra's to visits or whatever the yes. case may be, they look forward to that. And they don't want us to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want us to leave. And yeah. sometimes when we, like when we were talking about the graduating from hospice, when we leave, they're just really heartbroken. And sometimes they'll keep calling us, Oh really? A little, a little <laughs> after because we just provided so much support and friendship, yeah. um, and you know, with asking and pulling out all the information, you kind of get really personal with them, and um, it's kind of hard to just, you know, it's like I okay, mean, that's bye. An, as a, yeah, as a human being, <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. As a human yeah. being, that's that's just you know, I. I just can't fathom it. And I know that we don't always know their situations and Mm -hmm. why their children Mm -hmm. or whoever don't come around, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's some, whether it was abuse or whatever the case may be, we don't know what that is and we are, we're not in their shoes, but you know, again, just, I look at it as like, you know, I, I think it would be something God would want us to do as far as like, just allowing their transition to be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go there and, spill your guts or but just to show face sometimes and just to give company. you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you know yeah. to but mm-hmm. not every, it's it's really difficult i mean mm-hmm. that's a hard thing i i feel because you know my like my brother was you know a police officer for san antonio police department for many years and like you know he you know they become callous you know sure. and then you know i have EM, you know, EMTs and, you know, that are in the fire department mm-hmm. and same thing with them, you know, you know, this job, you kind of, you kind of, I would assume, and I, I mean, Sylvia can probably answer this more than I can, but you know, there are other people who just kind of like can cut, put that line there. Like we're not crossing that line. Mm-hmm. But again, I just feel like, I don't think when it comes to comparing to our compassion, I think that we feel I, again, I mean, and it's mm-hmm. sincere. Mm-hmm. It's sincere what mm-hmm. we do, and it's sincere what we do for the patients, it's right? Because not it's just because because the our compassion does just doesn't stop at the job when it's five o'clock or four yeah. o'clock. It just doesn't it's stop there. Yes. I would yes. think for your friend too. She's a teacher. Yeah, you know, you, how can you not have yeah. re, you right. know feel for your children uh, for your kids? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you know, and they love you. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing. It's the same thing for us. Mm -hmm. We love the patients and the patients love us and their families and their families, (laughs) you know, Uh especially, and I'm going to say, uh, just with my experience has been old Mexicanos. Uh Yeah. Uh Old Mexicanos are very, they feel like, especially towards the end of their life. Dad was this way where it was, (laughs) you know, I'm all right. I don't need anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and it was never very machismo type Mm -hmm. type life. Yeah. That, 
portion of that, but the other part of it was like he felt like he was being a hindrance or he was cumbersome. Yeah, my dad mm-hmm. went through that. Mm-hmm. He he didn't want to be a burden to us because right. you know my, my I was very blessed to have had my mom and dad with me on the road for forty years. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the baby, but I did have three other siblings. Mm-hmm. But my parents were with me all the time, so my parents have always been my world. That's you know caring for them, being with them all the time. But my dad was the same. He had a stroke in '99 when we were performing in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And so, you know, he got paralyzed, was not the same dad that, you know, I knew my whole life, like our life changed in an instant, like Mm -hmm. in a second. And um, so he did say that he's like, no, I'll just go somewhere. I don't want to be a burden on you. And, you know, my mom's like, no, we're going to take care of you. And all of us, you know, his kids were like, no, we're going to take care of you, dad. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be here at home with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did. We did. And same thing with my father, you know, when during his last week of life, you know, I just played my music for him. And that's what he wanted to hear. And so he w- he could not communicate was nonverbal. He he couldn't speak, but he would whistle, oh, really? you know, and that was always his thing was whistling, too. Mm-hmm. So he would whistle and stuff like that. But he was the same way. I told we have heard that, you know, in women, too, yeah. you know, even the older women, same way, mm-hmm. same way. Yeah. You know, it, dad, it was funny because uh, not I say funny or lack of better term, but uh, dad's dad grew up broke in a small town. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, in small communities, there's not a lot of work. So we were raised, hey, no matter what, go to work. You know, mm-hmm. if, it, if it comes down to family fun or work, mm-hmm. go to work, mm-hmm. you know. And so we were all kind of raised that way. So we've all kind of thrown ourselves into whatever our job is mm-hmm. for all the siblings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I tell everybody. We took dad, dad's last 80, 80 days, we took him to hyperbarics in mm-hmm, Corpus. Mm-hmm. And so I tell everybody, I said, you know, in hindsight, that was a blessing from God mm-hmm. because it was, it was miserable for him. Yeah. He was in terrible pain, mm-hmm. a lot of bleeding, uh, very uncomfortable. He had dialysis. So mm-hmm. it, you pick him up in George mm-hmm. West, take him to Corpus and take him to Beaver to dialysis mm-hmm. and then back home. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, it's a lot. <laughs> but in those 80 days, it forced us to spend time with him, yes. Yes. you know, and now all of a sudden work was not first, you know, mm-hmm. we, exactly. we got to get him to these appointments exactly. yes. and all the siblings and my mom split it up. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because after, after he passed was when you realized the importance of, it, yes. it, was, it was almost a gift to us yes. to mm-hmm. be able to spend mm-hmm. those 80 days with right. him so mm-hmm. it was a, right mm-hmm. the way i see it like cuz we've had we had great childhoods mm-hmm. our parents were very involved in our lives and in everything we in did in everything we did yes and you know we know that there's a, not, a lot of people that don't have those experiences and so I think that we can try to f- try to fill that void in them, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, and, and just try to help in whatever way we can. I mean, I can't be their mom or I can't be their dad or uh, all over again because I'm too young. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm but only 21. I'm only 21. I thought I was going to say 19. <laughs> now I feel like a perv. <laughs> but it's still over 18. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, it's important to spend the time with yeah with your parents. It, and you know, I love that you said that you know that you shared all of that because a lot of times the burden of of doing all of that falls on one. Yeah, and that is really really hard when it sure. falls on one, mm-hmm. and we see that so often. And it's not that. People don't really know that this is happening. You know, they don't know that, you know, because a lot of the, the siblings would be like, all you have to do is just call me, pick up the phone and call me. Why are you going through yeah, all this? Yeah, but you know what? You know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. You know, I shouldn't yes. have to call you. That's you shouldn't what all have the to siblings ask. say. Yeah. That's what all the siblings say. Yeah, you shouldn't have I to shouldn't ask. Have to. You should be here. You should That's call. Right. But you know what? But there are some families that come together, and I have a family that that's on services right now, and they literally want mom to be home. And she's home in her house, and they come and they stay with her, every, and they change off every uh, every week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. That's awesome when you see uh, that. Yes, well, it's the, the beautiful. Role, the role of a caretaker is a uh, is very heavy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, know? and it's <laughs> like yes. to as a family member. It let's is. say we're all three siblings, and you're you're doing everything. Mm-hmm. You know, for us to not try and help you, you right. know, mm-hmm. even though let's say you have more availability than mm-hmm. we do yes you know for mm-hmm. for people not to jump in and even mm-hmm. help this much exactly right. it's like if you just did a little bit extra mm-hmm. it would make a world of difference yeah and, and because you bring up a very good point because that goes into your emotional status yeah because yes you may have more availability in one person 
but the emotional level that this takes on is very different yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And so somebody may have a very heavy weight emotionally and somebody else may not have it as, as so heavy, but they can, a, a different circumstance will cause that, you know, or something to that effect. And so that's why it takes the whole family to do this. And yeah. so, um, you know, it's the same thing with, with our staff. We have to remain, um, I don't want to say... Um, numb but we have to have a, an emotional resilience against these things to to these things because we have to stand up strong to a lot of these things well you've still got to provide a service yes yeah. well, ultimately so you, yes you're you've right got the mm-hmm. emotional aspect of it but yes at a certain point you still have to do a job exactly right. yeah. exactly we right. have a we have a goal that we need to uh, pr- uh you know to reach and um it's providing the comfort and and so in all of this that we've just talked about we're still providing that comfort to the patient and to the caregiver and to the family. Yeah. And so um, there's, you know, there's more to hospice. You know, it's uh, durable medical equipment. It's medications. It's all the visits from the, from the, uh, from the staff. It's, um, did I miss anything? Medications, DME? Um, uh, I was going to say, we're, uh-huh. we, need to, we need to look at Lyris a little bit because I feel like we deviated. Okay. Yes, I think we deviated. Lyris had a whole list of, yeah. of things yeah. for us, and we're like, okay. We're, do, well, she can give us the she's notes. She's like, X, you got the X, notes. X. Oh, Harmony Hospice Care. <laughs> <laughs> Harmony Hospice. Yeah. She gave us this. Yes. 210-807-7484. You can uh, also find us on our website, www. Oh, wait, how many W's was that? You don't w- have to say, w- you don't have to say okay. those anymore. No, say it oh, okay. that's, that's Harmony Hospice Care. Oh. Net. Okay. <laughs> Kids, the abala espanol world wide web kids yes world and like <laughs> I'm, I'm not just saying that because it's them but yeah. like between sylvia and Lyris, like they are very knowledgeable when it comes to hospice and like no question is a dumb question y'all no like exactly. if, if you're watching and you're like oh, i don't they'll probably you know don't think that i mean whether you think someone needs it or you think you need it I mean, the, whatever questions you have, they're going to answer those mm-hmm. questions, what, no one, doubt. One thing I learned with my mother-in-law is there was a certain point where San Antonio doctors told her, we can no longer do anything for you. Mm-hmm. She literally said, I don't accept that. I'm going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And she went to probably four to five different doctors, and mm-hmm. then she ended up going to MD Anderson in Houston. Mm-hmm. She lived an extra six years. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and one thing that people need to realize, and this goes to old school Mexicanos, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So Because my mom's guilty. I love my mom, but she's guilty of it, and so is mm-hmm. my dad, where the doctor told me something, and that's scripture. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't, there's no, yeah. there's no other move. That's the generation. You yeah. have mm-hmm. to be your own advocate. Mm-hmm. Yes, you for sure. you got to be the one that's ask, like you said, no stupid, mm-hmm. ask questions. Ask questions. Yes. And if you don't know, ask again, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you've got to be your own advocate. Right. You know, most doctors in most facilities, they see hundreds of patients. And it's very difficult for you. And they're doing the best they can, mm-hmm. right? Right. Right. But it's up to you to go, hey, hang on. Mm-hmm. I didn't quite understand that. Mm-hmm. Or what's the next step after this? Mm-hmm. There's so much responsibility that's got to fall back on the individual. Right. right. And and it's important, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say it to Mexicans, because the Mexicans, older Mexicans that I know are the ones that are going, well, the doctor said, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And, and it's mm-hmm. like you've got to be more involved mm-hmm. in your care. Proactive, yes. Yeah. That's super important because um, I'm, I'm, uh, my mother-in-law said it's okay that I can do this. But my mother-in-law got diagnosed with breast cancer, mm. and um, she was faced with the, um, the you know, is she going to do treatment? Is she going to do surgery? What is she going to do? And so she didn't quite understand everything, all everything that was entailed. And so I would go to every single one of those visits, and then we would break everything down because... It's a lot. She yeah. doesn't understand, uh, you know, the you know the full staging and yeah. uh, what entails uh, in chemotherapy and all that kind of stuff. And but she did do her homework. She did find out like all the different things, and she talked to people. And how did that make you feel? And how That's did you good. feel after this? And all that. She did do her homework. But you know, if I hadn't been there, 
the questions probably wouldn't have been right. asked. And so that's why it is important. This mm-hmm. is a family thing. This mm-hmm. is a, uh, but I know you talked about your, you know, you have your, 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 the dads that, you know, oh, no, 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 I don't want nobody there. Or, you know, let's not, let's not go there. Or, oh, I'm okay. Or something to that effect. But it, you need to be present and you have to be proactive. Ask those questions, sure. everything. And, you know, it, because it may, it helps them make a better decision because, you come to the decision, it's like, okay, I don't really want to do that anymore. And it's okay if you don't want to be going to the hospital every yes. single time and getting poked and not sleeping because, you know, um, not to say that the staff do it on purpose, but they're working, they have a job, they need to get in there, they got to run labs, they got to do this, they got to do that. And there's different people going in and out of the room all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you're in ICU, there's a such thing as ICU psychosis because people don't sleep for days there, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's and so, not ICU. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so, you know, being in the hospital is not always the best thing. Sure. Sometimes it's being home and being comfortable and being on hospice and being, you know, somewhere where you have access to the nurse 24 seven. We yes. have 24 seven nurses are, our uh, response. And, and that's not just our hospice. It's every hospice. Right. They need to answer the phone and be pre and be available for you 24 seven. And so, um, you know, that, those are just the things that that um, that I know that are important to a lot of these patients. One thing that I want to talk about is uh, DNR. Yes. Mm, so, so my. Did you see my TikTok? I did. I did, but it, it, remind, it reminded me of. Uh, it's important to know. Yes. It. yes. Uh-huh. Like, like my my wife still struggles because. At one point, she had to have a serious conversation with her mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was it wasn't a it wasn't a very it didn't go very well mm-hmm. because the mom I think her her mom at, I want to say at one point had agreed to the DNR mm-hmm. and then had some time to think about it mm-hmm. and nobody wants to die. Of course, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And so she I think she got to the point where she had become very fearful of what was happening. Mm-hmm. Right, and so she no longer wanted to sign the DNR mm-hmm. and. What one thing that's very difficult is, you know, you sit there and go, okay, I want to be resuscitated, but what is that? People don't understand what that looks like. Exactly. You know, I was it, gonna. That's the first thing I was gonna say. Yeah. Yes. I, I think. A, I think a doctor even told my dad they they did chest compressions on dad that that February. But, you know, they'll tell you, hey, we're going to drop the bed on the floor and we're going to give you chest compressions and we're probably going to break ribs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's like if you're already in a very fragile state, <clears throat> that's even worse. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and that and that's the job of hospice. You know, unfortunately, we have to have those hard conversations and your hospice nurses will will be there. Your social worker will be there. Your chaplain will be there to have those hardcore conversations because um, you're right. I mean, let's just take, for instance, I mean, I just literally had this conversation with my mother-in-law not too long ago about a DNR. And um, at first they said no. Uh, and then she, we started talking about it, but I was, you know, right where she's got the breast cancer. I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't imagine them doing chest compressions mm-hmm. on you. It's like, what what kind of damage are we going to be doing if we're doing chest compressions? You know, it's like you barely touch them and, 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 you know, it hurts, you know, and it's like, I can't imagine doing a chest compression on you and bringing you resuscitating you, bringing you back. And it's like, that would be more torturous for you, I would think, you know? And so it's different for everybody. It's very different for everybody. Like, I don't know the full circumstances of your mother-in-law and what would, would that entail, but a lot of times it's um, some of the patients are very uh, frail and they have lost so much weight. They're literally just bones right. because they don't have appetites anymore. And um, and so what would we do to that person if somebody, you know, you know, like my husband's size or, you know, a man, you know, most of the firefighters mm-hmm. that come in are, are men and, and, you know, they're strong. What is that going to do for, to the little you know, person like that, you know, yeah. it's like it, we would be doing more damage than, than helping this person. And so, and I always tell my, my patients, we have to, it's, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. You know, it's, it's like we're doing good or we're doing bad. You know, what is it that we're doing? You know, because the ultimate, what is going to be that final result? Right. Is it going to be, you know, the, a good thing? 
bringing you back? I mean, what is that going to look like? Really? Yeah. What is that going to look like? And so a lot of times they would just kind of be like, mm, yeah, you're right. You know? And so it's like, you know, we're here. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about more. What are your fears mm-hmm. of, you know, if you, if you stop breathing, what are, what are some of your fears? It's going to hurt. My family's going to hurt. They're going to cry. Yes, they are. Yes. Grief, grief is a very, uh, is a very real thing. And unfortunately, the way that I see it is when you're, when you, and this is just me personally, when you have that grief, it's because you loved. Mm-hmm. And is there really something wrong with loving? No, there right. isn't anything wrong with loving anybody. And so when you have that deep grief, there isn't wrong, there's not, nothing wrong with mourning and crying mm-hmm. and uh, trying to, to compose yourself and all those kinds of things. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Nobody says, okay, this is the way it's going to be, and this is the way it's going to be, and that, you know, this is how you're going to feel. No, everybody's different. Everybody grieves differently, Everybody too. Everybody grieves differently, yeah, for yes. sure. Not, that you, not, not assuming that you guys have any sort of long-term anything, but do you all offer any, po- uh, any mm-hmm. grief or post- uh, Actually, transition. My bereavement yeah. coordinator is okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony okay. is our bereavement coordinator. When someone passes on our services, we do offer bereavement services, and it's a program that every hospice offers uh, for a year after they pass. Oh, and so, year. yes, so you'll get mailings, you'll get calls, you'll get uh, all kinds of things. And so, we actually do attend the funerals. If they do, there's uh, there more increasingly uh, for some reason I don't know why, but people are really not having services anymore. Really? Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's it's different. What are they? Just, is, what are they doing? Um, sometimes they're just kind of getting together at their own homes. So almost, uh-huh. almost like a wake type thing. Kind of yeah. like that, yes. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. The the last couple of them have been like that, right? Where we, they haven't really had any services. And so, uh, but wherever they go, we're at, we're there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yes. And so it's, he's, if a child is involved in the home, because we recently had a, um, someone pass and she's, she had a, a high schooler and that's a very difficult age for, to lose a mom. Yeah. And, um, and so we were needing to refer them over to the, um, to the, to the, um, the center. Yeah. The child bereavement center. Yes, exactly. And so, um, and there is one here in town. Yes, there is one here in town, and they are awesome. Okay. They are so good. And so, even if they are not of children, like grandchildren, um, that are having difficult times, because a lot of times they're close to their grandparents, um, they they have that too as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, before we wrap this up, I Mm -hmm. feel like we should make sure lyrics <laughs> lyrics she's got her nose lyrics. 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 Come, come on, on lyrics. over come come on, on. we'll show you in between the two ladies yes come on i'm gonna have you sit lyrics down. is probably gonna explain it like more because she does this <laughs> way more than i do oh you got mm-hmm. it <laughs> she's gonna go yeah uh-huh you got it yes Lyris, let, let her rip, because I, I, I could Hi. feel you back there. I could no, feel like, Lyris. She's like, I was like, I need a board to write stuff. She's like, you all missed so much. <laughs> <laughs> so introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Lyris Lades, and I am the Director of Business Development for Harmony Hospice Care. And I uh, come out and I meet all of the patients and the families uh, before, before we move forward with services. Um, the first thing that we do or that I do is, is I connect with the patient. Um, if, if they're able to, if they're lucid and they're um, uh, willing to see me and speak with me, then, you know, I, I walk in and, you know, a lot, I mean, we're, we're in San Antonio, we serve a lot of Hispanic families and majority of our, of our families and patients um, can be Hispanic. And so, you know, if I walk into a home, I start seeing wedding photos and quinceanera photos, mm. and I'm like, oh, mira, that looks beautiful. How long have you been married? Well, 54 years. Mira, que bueno. Like, mm-hmm. it's just getting getting to meet them where they're at and, and building trust yeah. and building a relationship. Because you're a stranger walking into their house. Yeah. They mm-hmm. are already going to be apprehensive and hesitant to 
talk, to speak, to say what's on their heart. And so they're already like on guard, you know, because who's this lady? ¿Quién es esa muchacha que, que está entrando a mi casa? Yeah. You know, but the thing is, is, you know, it's like I walk in and I'm trying to to gauge their one, their comprehension level. Uh, or who, whoever else might be involved with the care of the, the of the of the patient, because it might just be them by themselves, or it might might be a couple other people in the home. But nonetheless, you know, I'll gauge who's there, comprehension, friendliness, uh, openness, um, and dogs. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, put away your pit bulls, please. <laughs> uh, not that pit bulls are bad, but no, you know. Um, but no, it, it, it's just a matter of really building um, a relationship and, and having a connection with the, the patient and their family members that are involved with their care. Yeah. And, and one of the first things that I, I tell them, I'm like, look, it's important for you to know that this is not permanent. Just because you um, say may say yes to hospice doesn't mean that that just draws a line in the sand or you're throwing in the towel that means that you're giving up we want to help improve the quality of life right. for a patient and that's the the the, the priority mm -hmm. to help manage their pain like <clears throat> sylvia said to help bring emotional support to them you know through through whether it be through music or through spiritual support counseling or through emotional support counseling because we have a social worker that comes in talks to the family members and the and the patients um, but we, we want them to have enough information that they can understand what hospice truly means today, not what it meant 20 years ago. Yeah. And I think the perspective of a lot of people, especially in the Hispanic culture, is that if I choose hospice or if my mom or my dad or my relative gets on hospice, you se van a morir allá in, yeah. un, in yeah. one week or tomorrow. Right. And that's not the case always. In some of those situations, it means that they did not get inf enough information to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Because in order to make a decision, you have to have in in information mm -hmm. to make an informed decision, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the families um, have to be comfortable with asking questions or talking about or having hard conversations and talking about death and dying. In our culture... No one wants to talk about death yep. and dying. But we, what we want to encourage is for, for, for everyone to embrace grief. And it's not easy to do that. But that when you, when you are going through the struggle and, ju and, and, and juggling, trying to take care of a loved one, and you're carrying like this, these heavy burdens and, and worries and frustrations and even anger, um, that you can lean on people that are... That are compassionate that are willing to listen and try to understand where you're coming from the 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 gentleman that was estranged from his father he kept asking why are you all helping me mm -hmm. you know why are you all uh giving me this chance he hadn't seen his father for what is it 30 years or so 30 plus years and didn't have a relationship with him but because of how much we care and that sincerity is there, mm -hmm. we were trying to do what needed to be done. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the difference between uh, what Harmony Hospice is all about. We're, we're all about bringing compassion and, and bringing the families to unite. If, if, it's, if they're able to, now we're not going to force anybody sure. to do those sort of things, you know, because there might be other underlying um, conflict or division mm -hmm. that may have happened from years ago, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, right? Um, but it's just really treading those areas very carefully and making sure that um, we're meeting them where they're at, yeah. whatever it is that they're comfortable with. And so, you know, embracing grief is, is really hard to do, but I think that when you have support, somebody who cares, somebody who's willing to listen, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody who's, who's willing to pray. My yes. goodness, we need prayer. Yes. Like all of us need sure. prayer. Yes. Our, our yeah, families our need prayer. Pray. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so we, we, yes. we, 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 we pray fervently for not only our, our, our staff and, and, and the company itself, but we, we earnestly pray for our, our patients mm -hmm. and the families and the struggles that they're going through because ultimately when it is in that moment where the patient may be transitioning, um, we're in heaven's waiting room. 
mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, and that's when the veil moves and, sure. mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit makes its presence and, and oh, we just, God. you know, it's, it's in the glory of God. Yes, you know, it's funny you say that because my mother-in-law will go back to her and her, the experience with her. There was a time there that me and my wife were sitting with her and, and she was, she wasn't verbal. She wasn't awake. Mm-hmm. And I remember she's sitting in this dark hallway and, uh, and I'm an adult, right? I'm in my thirties. And uh, I felt so lost. And mm-hmm. I remember saying a little prayer and asking for help. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because shortly after I prayed for that, uh, her Thea Gracie came around the corner with two Bibles. Mm-hmm. And she had this look on her face like she was really determined. And she was going into something very serious. Mm-hmm. And I gave her a hug. She went in there and she prayed most of the night with my wife's mm-hmm. mom. And and uh, she started shaking. And... Uh, my wife puts her hand on, on her Thea and says, uh, are you okay? And she goes, she says, don't touch me. Mm. And she goes, the Holy Spirit's here. She, mm. She's taking your mom tonight. Mm. And sure enough, about an hour later, her, her mom passed. Mm. You know, one thing that I asked her earlier, I said, uh, asked the ladies, I said, you know, where, where do you draw strength to do this type of work? Mm-hmm. And it's funny because bringing Lyris in, and seeing the three of you together, it it, it kind of dawned on me the strength comes out of your familial bond. You know, the fact that you're family and you're doing this, you're on this journey together. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it, it feels different talking to three of y'all as mm-hmm. it, than what it did talking to two of you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, that's, I mean, there's your faith, but then there's this mm-hmm. family thing mm-hmm. happening, mm-hmm. you know, and... Uh, it's beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, it, it is beautiful. And I thank you for, for being a supporter of hospice care. Yes, Absolutely. That's yes. Im- it's important for, yes. for there to be advocates for hospice, mm-hmm. um, to, to try to help remove the stigma of sure. what hospice used to be, right? right? Of that perspective of like, ya me voy a morir tomorrow, y ya, everything's yeah. done. But that's not the case always because every situation is different. Every illness is different. The conditions are different. And so when someone is going through a, 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 a season when their quality of life is going for a dive, like they're having a lot of falls, mm-hmm. uh, they're going in and out of the hospital quite a bit, mm-hmm. um, they're having a lot of unmanaged pain, infections, uh, infections mm-hmm. and they, they might need medical equipment like a hospital bed that will help them feel more comfortable or, or a chair that will help them sit upright a little bit better. Just, yeah. you know, those sort of things. It's, it's okay to reach out for help and support because we don't come in the home Oh, mandonas, you know, no, like, no, no. oh, we're going to rule <laughs> no. your house and change yeah, what you sure. have going on. Because yeah. if, if you have routine, you know, all we're doing is lending support and recommendation and education that comes from the, the hospice nurse mm-hmm. expert, you know. And then we have our music support mm-hmm. that lends in the emotional support therapy that's there. And then we have our chaplain that brings in mm-hmm. the spiritual support for, mus- for, for prayer or for uh, just... Ministry of presence, just mm-hmm. being present yeah. and listening to that individual. And then mm-hmm. we have our, our, our social worker who's there for the counseling. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a holistic part of the hospice services that people don't understand or don't realize or know that is there available for them when and if and they, if they need it. Yeah. And, and, and we just want to encourage people to, to, to say like, look, you know, I'm having a hard time and it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. I think it's important. Like you said earlier, it's not even just a matter of saying, you know, there's, like you said, there's a stigma behind hospice care yeah. mm-hmm. and that it's, you're thrown in the towel and it's the, it's the end of the road. Yeah. And, and you know what, that may be the case, mm-hmm. but it's kind of, it's, it goes back to what does that quality of life look like? You know, mm-hmm. if, right. if you've got, if you've got five years left or you've got seven days, it's mm-hmm. like, how can we improve that quality of life, exactly. whatever you have left? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's what people need to focus on. They yeah. need to focus yeah. less on, hey, I'm at, I'm at the end of my line. It's, hey, how can I, how can I live mm-hmm. th- this, what I have left the best that I can and mm-hmm. how can we make it right. better? So. Mm-hmm. What do you I, want I, to say more? Oh, yes. I, I, let me just add the, the, I say the three Ps. Okay. Okay. And these are my three Ps. And I share the, P, the three Ps with the families when I'm uh, connecting with them and building the relationship before we start talking like specifics of a hospice, right? The three Ps are to, to let's get ready to prepare. Let's get ready to plan so that you can be present 
with your loved one mm -hmm. because ultimately that's what really matters. All of the chaos, the frustration, all of that can be left to the wayside for just a moment so that you can be present. Mm -hmm. When the nurse is there, when the, when the music coordinator is there, when the chaplain is there, when the social worker is there, you know, they can lead on us. And, and we're open 24 hours. They mm -hmm. can pick up the phone and yeah. they can. It's not just a, when they do the visits, you sure. know, on those scheduled days, but it's also when uh, they need help at two o'clock in the morning and on a Saturday night. They don't there the, there there isn't uh, enough understanding that we're 24 yeah. seven and we can't we're only a phone call away. Yeah, these bags are not for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> only a phone call away. And for those that do have Medicare and then the Medicare situation, but if, if an individual does have their Medicare, it covers these services and these benefits 100%. Okay. And, and I think that's also important to know because they think that they have to pay for these services. Yeah. You know, through Medicare, if, if they have it, the Medicare will cover those services 100% for them. And I guess even if somebody, even if somebody sees hospice care as, as something that potentially could be on the horizon, uh, they can call you guys and... Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. To ask questions, find out more. And, How do and people they, get hold of you? Simple. Just, you can just call us, 210-807. 74884 and, uh, and then of course they can also see check us out on on our website which is www.harmonyhospicecare.net and they can also watch us on social media and then Sylvia has her TikTok channel which is Hospice Nurse Sil uh -huh. right yeah, <laughs> yeah and so she, she has some gives, great videos yeah, yeah. She, some great videos. she does a lot of a lot of yeah. really interesting educational videos sure, yeah, and scenarios sure. and so i think that's that's also a great way for people to connect and maybe even ask questions yeah. mm -hmm. and and feel free to reach out mm -hmm. you know yeah, we're, reach out. Yes. With, uh, I just wanted to say that that's the whole reason why we put on, it's very difficult that everything we just said here in an hour to put in a brochure. Sure. Yeah. It's so difficult to do that. But I we put that in the very back and it says Encounter Harmony Hospice because that's what you're going to do when you get on. We're going to impact your life and uh, because we're serious about what we do and we're serious about impacting your life and we're serious about when we say that it's not about dying we're not going to focus on that dying we're going to focus on the living mm -hmm. all the living that you have to do <coughs> up until that sure. last time mm -hmm. outstanding ladies mm -hmm. i appreciate y'all coming out thank you sure. for having us I thank you for reaching out you. i hope this helped you <laughs> absolutely yes, yeah. okay and, and, and your you, listeners you know yes. one, uh -huh. one thing that's important is is a lot of times we we just we don't know what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. We don't know what mm -hmm. we don't know kind of thing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like to be able to you you know you had that video on uh, on uh, uh, the DNR, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and it's like there's so many different things that people just don't understand yes. about that end of life care type mm -hmm. thing, you know. So to be able to to, to utilize a resource, mm -hmm. you know, and to know you have one locally, you mm -hmm. know, and that's yeah. doing things a little bit yeah. differently, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, my mother in law would have loved yeah. to have somebody come yeah. see oh, her. Absolutely, and they, yes. I mean, we do the surrounding some of the surrounding areas of San Antonio. It's mm -hmm. not solely. Just San Antonio. So uh -huh. Antonio. Y'all have a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a radius that y'all cover? Or? We actually cover all of Texas, but oh. um, yeah, we're, I, I can't travel to Dallas yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, or to Houston or to anything, but we try so to kind of stick. rural communities. Yeah, we just kind of stick to the areas around San Antonio because we can uh, service, you know, we got to be realistic of what sure. we can service because we have to be there, mm -hmm. um, you know, probably often and sometimes every day when it's coming close to the end. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not just a solely San Antonio right. deal. It's mm -hmm. it's surrounding areas. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Ladies, yeah. thank y'all so much. I have a question. Is there like a specific song that you get the reaction most out of patients? Um there's not a specific song <laughs> no. at all. No. Everybody's different. Yeah they all they all have different ones. Mm -hmm. I always cry with me I know. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> well the one I sang for the for the one patient that loved it, yeah, they mm -hmm. like that one. But I mean, I've saying from, again, it just depends on the patient because mm -hmm. I have some that love Tejano. I have some that love country. I have some that like mariachi. I have some that love Christian music mm -hmm. and some that love jazz. So it totally depends on what the patient loves. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'll do. I had one that they loved Blue Bayou. She's got that one. Oh, oh yeah. Blue they Bayou, that we one. had that. Mm -hmm. I had one patient that he was a white man, but he loved conjunto music. Really? Like mm -hmm. he loved conjunto music. Yeah. So I would try to do more conjunto stuff for him. That's awesome. Yeah, so he, he loved it. So, That's awesome. Yeah.
Mm. Great question. <laughs> She's hired. <laughs> hey. Hey, what else she should have? be the co-host. You've what, been promoted. What else do you have? <laughs> She's the one that did all the setup. And <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm going I'm to hear about that later. I'm going to hear about that later. So. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. And uh, again... Harmony Thank Hospice you, Care, yes, HHC. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, people, check out your website, check out your social media, mm-hmm. and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to these ladies. So, Thank yeah. you so much for having us, and from Absolutely. the bottom of our hearts, um, we really appreciate you uh, allowing us to uh, get the awareness of hospice out there mm-hmm. because it's important. And um, I know I did a, um, um, I spoke at Palo Alto, and it, I gave a percentage of the amount of Hispanics that are on hospice, and it's super low. What did really? I say? It was like it's like nine percent. Nine percent. Why do you think that is? Because they don't know. They don't know that the benefit is there. Yeah. And yeah. that that was the, that was or my we other go part. Back to, was we go back to the old school stuff yes, again. Uh-huh. The old school yes. ways. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, like I'm fine, or I don't need it, or no, that's not for me, or I can't afford it, or whatever right. the case may be. Mm-hmm. Or do you? Yeah, I guess there's the they can't afford it yeah. part too. But mm-hmm. you know, I wonder if there's also a because. Like my mom's struggling right now with with putting her mom in hospice care. She's got dementia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I explained to mom, I said, you know, she's been falling a lot. The last thing you want is for her to live the rest of her life with a broken hip or something. Yes. Well, you You need to have her call and speak to the girls about it. I'll talk to her. Yes. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, she, she's, uh, uh, and just, I think a, a lot of times, it feels like McDonald's tend to say, well, I'm going to keep them at home, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep... Mm-hmm. I can so, take care of them. And that's mm-hmm. fine because that's exactly what you yeah. guys do, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, and again, not knowing that this is an option, you know, yes, you can keep them in your house mm-hmm. and still right. get, have provide these services that are yes. going to improve their life. So, yes. yes. Thank you so much. Thank Yay. you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they did wonderful. Good job. Good job. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. We're harmonious. <laughs> yes. Thanks for listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast.